This is How to Listen to Music Part 3, Orchestral Wind Instruments. This series of videos is an attempt to help you understand more about the music that surrounds you every day and ultimately help you enjoy what you hear. In this third video, we will listen to audio samples of orchestral wind instruments. All the samples have been taken from YouTube and the links will be given at the end of the video. Just like in the videos on orchestral strings and orchestral brass, we need to learn the names and sounds of orchestral wind instruments on our way to learning to listen to music. The wind instruments used most in a standard orchestra are the flute, the oboe, the clarinet and the bassoon, although we will mention a few others. As you may now expect, these instruments grew out of other similar instruments that preceded them, but these are now what you'll find in the standard orchestra. Let's first listen to the sound of the flute. Here's Gareth Davis from the London Symphony Orchestra playing a flute solo from the Allegro section of Beethoven's Leonore Overture No. 3. No longer made of wood, the flute has a bright sound in its upper register. It is an agile instrument, thanks to Theobald Boehm, who created the intricate key system now found on all woodwind instruments. As it is agile and of similar range, the flute is often heard playing the same line as the violins. The term is doubling the violins. In its lower register, it loses its dynamic power, but gains a darker, richer quality, as can be heard in this example from Vorjak's New World Symphony in the first movement. Without a delicate accompaniment from the strings, the flute would be overpowered. The flute family includes the piccolo, which sounds an octave higher than the flute, reads almost the same notes as the flute, but the pitch it produces will be eight notes higher than that produced by the flute, and the alto flute. Let's go back to Gareth Davis to hear a short excerpt for piccolo from Rossini's Semiramide Overture. Piccolo's clarity will make it stand out from almost any orchestral texture. The alto flute, on the other hand, is much more mellow. Composers working in the early 20th century and on, like Stravinsky, Ravel and Holst, really made more of this instrument. Significant solos for alto flute can be found in Saturn from Holst's The Planets and Ron Prantanière from Stravinsky's The Rite of Spring. Sound is made on all members of the flute family, by blowing air across the opening on the side of the tube. The air inside the tube then vibrates and escapes through the open end. The manner in which the sound begins is considerably different for the clarinet family. The clarinet is a single reed instrument, which means a reed, a thin flat piece of cane, in the case of the clarinet, a piece of cane similar to bamboo, vibrates against a mouthpiece when air is blown through it. Capable of enormous expressive and pitch range for a wind instrument, the clarinet is equally at home in the orchestra as it is playing jazz. Here's Benny Goodman taking full advantage of the clarinet's bright upper register while playing the Pinkard, Casey and Bernie tune, Sweet Georgia Brown. register is rich and dark, and the composer Tchaikovsky uses clarinets in this Chalamot register at the beginning of his Fifth Symphony, played here by the Boston Symphony Orchestra, 
conducted by Leonard Bernstein. The quality of the sound on the clarinet changes according to the register. I mentioned the term chalumeau in reference to the lowest register of the clarinet. The term refers to an instrument that preceded the clarinet, the chalumeau. Higher registers are referred to as the clarino register. Clarino meaning trumpet-like. Clarino was a name given to high-pitched medieval military trumpets. And altissimo register. So far I've been speaking about the clarinet as if there's only one type. Like the family of trumpets, the clarinet family includes a range of instruments. The family includes the B-flat clarinet, the most common, and smaller members of the family with higher ranges, the E-flat clarinet and less common D clarinet, and the bass clarinet. There are others including the A and C clarinets that are similar to the B-flat clarinet, and E-flat alto clarinet and a contrabass clarinet. A quick glimpse at first the E-flat clarinet and then the bass clarinet will give you a sense of the possibilities of the range. This is Mo Chi Yu from the London Symphony Orchestra playing an excerpt from Berlioz's Symphony Fantastique. And now Lorenzo Iosco, also from the London Symphony Orchestra, playing a short passage from Don Quixote by Richard Strauss. I will take a moment to mention the saxophone here, which, like the clarinet, is a single reed instrument and, also like the clarinet, has a variety of family members. Saxophones are chiefly found in the world of jazz rather than classical music. Whether it's the sax section in a swing band, Charlie Parker, John Coltrane, or any other great player, the saxophone is synonymous with jazz. However, a number of 20th century composers of classical music used it sparingly in the orchestra. Copland, Gershwin, Vaughan Williams, Prokofiev, and Ravel. All these were composers who were creative in the way they used the orchestra to create different sound colours otherwise known as orchestration. Moving on to our final instrumental family, the oboe and bassoon are double reed instruments, which means when played, two reeds vibrate against each other rather than a separate fixed mouthpiece, as is the case with the clarinet. Both, but perhaps the oboe most of all, are arguably the most challenging wind instruments to play, and this is largely due to the reed. When it's played as well as it is here, the oboist from the London Festival Orchestra plays the oboe solo from the opening of the Dance of the Swans from Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake. It makes that hard work worthwhile.
English horn, or corps anglais, which is neither English in origin nor a horn, it's actually a French invention, is the alto voice of the double reed family. Rich in tone colour, it is nevertheless hard to differentiate from the oboe at certain pitches, but unmistakable, with a little practice, in a passage like this one by Berlioz from his Roman Carnival Overture, played here by Simon Lee from the 2011 YouTube Symphony Orchestra. The bassoon is the lowest of the woodwind instruments, although the contrabassoon sounds an octave below the bassoon. It is quite agile and can play an enormous range of notes. It is equally at home moving quickly through low notes or slowly through high ones. A quick snippet of Mozart's Marriage of Figaro Overture, played by the principal bassoonist from the London Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> and of Gustavo Nunez of the Royal Concertgebouw Orchestra playing the eerie opening to Stravinsky's Rite of Spring. As far as combinations of wind instruments go, the wind quintet, flute, oboe, clarinet, bassoon and French horn, is a chamber ensemble. In this regard, it is like the string quartet, but unlike the string quartet, it presents the composer with an opportunity to bring together very different sounding instruments. It is perhaps not surprising that many 20th century composers were drawn to the wind quintet. Here the ensemble slow wind plays the first of Hungarian composer Jorgi Ligeti's Bagatelles for Wing Quintet. Larger woodwind-only ensembles have not attracted the attention of composers over the years. Instead, woodwinds find themselves combined with brass instruments to form the symphonic band or wind band. The staple of many high schools in the UK and high schools and colleges in the US, the wind band or concert band or symphonic band can find itself playing original music by contemporary composers, but almost nothing by composers of note before the early 20th century. This is likely due to historical association with military music, but while military music from around the world exercised an influence on composers like Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven and others, a full discussion is beyond the scope of this video. <laughs> 